Hello. Well, today I wanted to talk about a movie um, that I previously <clears throat> got in a big collection set that you, I've, I've shown off it on this uh, channel before, but um, hadn't really talked about it. And I thought since it's 30 years old and the year is almost over, why not talk about <laughs> this movie? And that is um, True Romance. Um, in short, this movie is about a comic book store employee um, who, uh, on his birthday, he saw a triple feature of a, well, on the back of this, uh, uh, Sonny Chiba, uh, triple uh, bill, and then a woman, uh, Alabama, when it comes into his life, and they, uh, uh, get together for a bit and then uh, yeah eventually they just they get married and uh, she however uh, has uh, some people uh, that she has, she's associated with like primarily like, you know a, a pimp and so uh, he goes to deal with uh, uh, her pimp and then um kills her or kills the guy and then uh he tries to get her clothes but en ends up getting a suitcase full of cocaine which um come to find out is uh full of cocaine and it begins in detroit and then they uh, head to uh, california uh to try and sell it and uh, Clarence, who knows uh, some people in, somebody in California, uh, and they go to try to sell it, and the, all the while, uh, uh, the mob finds out, because, you know, again, like, you know, there's their cocaine, um, uh, after, uh, taking care of, uh, Clarence's father, uh, it was played by uh, <clears throat> Dennis Hopper. Um, and yeah, it's just this huge uh, thing where uh, the two of them are just trying to uh, uh, make something of themselves. And uh, yeah, this is a quite the film it's directed by uh tony scott who uh probably best known movie of all the things he's done would be a uh, top gun i mean he's made other films but that would probably be what everybody thinks of so uh this film stars christian slater as clarence uh, patricia arquette as uh alabama uh, uh dennis hopper plays uh clarence's uh father cliff uh, Mel Kilmer plays uh, the mentor, who is basically Elvis, in a gold suit. And uh, Gary Oldman plays the pimp, uh, Drexel. And, uh, and uh, this arrow set is really cool. Um, uh, Brad Pitt is in this as uh, Floyd. Uh, Christopher Walken is like a, is Vincenzo, who is a, the main mob guy. Um, and spoilers, he's the guy who kills uh, Dennis Hopper. But and Samuel L. Jackson, before he was well known, was in this as uh, James Gandolfini as well. Chris Penn, and Tom Sizemore were in this. Um, Michael Rappaport. Saul Rubinick. Um, just a real, like a fantastic uh, all-star cast. Um, the music was done by uh, uh, Hans Zimmer, and uh, this film is written by Quentin Tarantino. Um, and uh, yeah, I just... Uh, uh, Took the insert inside out to have the original poster because, you know, why not? Because uh, 
There was a a steelbook uh, version of this for Arrow, and uh, uh, but this kind of just looks cooler. It, uh, it's just a uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I like the comic book look because you know it definitely fits with. Uh, Uh, Clarence's, uh, you know, his fondness of uh, comic books, as well as Elvis. Um, uh, hence why the mentor is basically dressed up like Elvis. Um, everybody in this film does a great job. Um, of course, this is a Tarantino script. It's very violent and also has a lot of uh, profanity, but that's pretty much expected. Um, this version also uh, has a, a poster, obviously, with of uh, the new cover as well as the uh, original. This is a, a, a film that uh, I know not uh, everybody will love um, just because of the uh, uh, people haven't seen it. People might not ever, might not enjoy this much. Um, you know, even if you're a fan of Quentin Tarantino, it could be just like, you know, the violence or whatever. Just, just something about it, though, I guess. If violence is the problem, then you're probably not going to like much of anything Tarantino's uh, does though the dialogue is quite uh, well done um i, I read that uh, brad pitt uh, improvised most of his lines so that's really cool gary oldman apparently changed some stuff just to try to make the character very more authentic um because basically <laughs> what tony scott uh said to him you know he's a it's a tarantino uh script and basically the uh the guy you be playing is a white guy who thinks he's black and is a pimp. So Gary Oldman right away just said yes when he got the script. He then started to uh, craft the character. He uh, had the guy who the people who did uh, his the wig for Dracula make him the dreadlocks that he wears, and then he uh, had the scars as well as like one eye being like milky, like blind. Um, and just sort of showed up, uh, to, uh, yeah, to, uh, the set, and, uh, immediately they were all, uh, uh Tony Scott and him were happy, and then he changed enough of the, of his dialogue in order to seem more authentic, um, uh, I enjoy this film. Um, I don't know where I would put it as uh, in terms of like like Tarantino's universe, which this is part of the universe. Um, Alabama, you know that name is referenced in Reservoir Dogs. Um, uh, which I guess could be like perhaps similar to this film. Um, but, you know, uh, could be a connection to exactly to that, or could be something else. Just from the way that it's just the dialogue in Reservoir Dogs goes, it just sort of like goes uh, fast enough to where, you know, when you see this film, you're just wondering whether or not it actually is the exact same Alabama or not. But regardless, uh, that's kind of a cool thing. And then uh, Donowitz, somebody who, like, you know, uh, movie producer who they're trying to sell a coke to the name uh donnie donowitz is in uh an in inglorious bastard so there's another connection to tarantino's uh universe uh, 
you know, I've really been getting a bunch of Arrow stuff this year. I, uh, yeah, I just, uh, I've been really fond of, uh, of, of their, their stuff. It's really cool. I mean, there's Christopher Walken. Eh, you're not really able to see the dude in the middle too well because of the way the book is, but yeah. Christian Slater as Lawrence, or Clarence. I don't know where Lawrence came from, but yeah, Lawrence of Arabia. There you go. And apparently the first day that they were shooting, yeah. Both Tony Scott and uh, uh, yeah, uh, Christian Slater, they had two different ideas of how the character should be uh, like, uh, portrayed. And so he, uh, Tony Scott gave uh, uh, Christian Slater a, a copy of Taxi Driver, told him to watch this for homework so as a way to know how to properly portray the character. And there's a uh, Patricia Arquette as Alabama. And, uh, and there's a uh, Brad Pitt uh, basically being high and uh, him improvising everything is. Uh, but pretty much is uh, really cool. At some point, he had, he creates like a bong out of like a one of those bear uh, like syrup bottles or whatever, and or honey bottles. And he like makes a bong and he's smoking like weed out of it, which is uh, quite clever and pretty funny. There's a. Dennis Hopper is uh, Cliff, is uh, Clarence's father. Uh, Chris Penn, who is also in Reservoir Dogs. Um, Val Kilmer. Oh, there's a, there you go. There's a better, I guess, picture of just uh, Dennis Hopper on his own. Oh, there you go. There's Gary Oldman. Yeah, he basically created the look on his own, and it definitely works. Um, it's a definitely a memorable character. Um, even though uh. Uh, you know, a lot of people say that's the best performance Gary Oldman's ever given. I, I, I don't know about that. I still think, you know, some like Tinker Taylor Soldier Spy, in my opinion, is his best performance. Um, which is kind of hard to say. Um, regarding an actor like him. Uh... So yeah, this uh, movie has quite a bit of people in it, you know. Even some of the people who were major stars yet at the, at the time, like James Gandolfini or Samuel L. Jackson. Um, you know, even Brad Pitt was still somebody who was still coming up. I know he did, uh, before this film, was uh, Thelma and Louise, um, 
but you know even then uh, he uh, you know was still uh, trying to get that part that would make him a big huge hidden uh, this is a this is a cult film um, um, interview with a vampire was in 94 which also had Christian Slater and of course Tom Cruise so that was a huge film for Brad Pitt then the next year was Seven, and then Twelve Monkeys, which Twelve Monkeys got Brad Pitt his first Academy Award nomination. And then years later, uh, Brad Pitt would actually work with Quentin Tarantino himself uh, twice, and then Glorious Bastards, and then Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And then he won an Oscar for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Um, but yeah, this is a film that I think it's definitely at least worth watching once, whether or not you uh, end up enjoying it at the end is another question, but I think it's definitely worth watching once. Uh, there's t Tony Scott. Also, I think you can definitely see some of the influence of Travis Bickle a bit with the, the jacket that, uh, or coat, whatever, that uh, Christian Slater is. Uh, wears at times throughout the film. Yeah, there's some interviews on uh, in this, and uh, quite a bit of special features. Um, yeah, this is a. A very good uh, film, and there's actually commentary by Quentin Tarantino, which is quite rare because Tarantino doesn't really do commentaries. Um, it says the R-rated version as well as the theatrical cut, um, or the, the director's cut. <laughs> um, director's cut's only uh, two minutes longer, so uh, uh, two hours and one minute, so. You know, a huge amount of uh, footage was put back in uh, that couldn't be uh, put in originally because of, uh, I guess, you know, it wouldn't have been rated R otherwise. It's always interesting when you've got, like, the director's cut and then you see how uh, just what all else is put in and it's like, it, well, it wasn't a whole lot, but, you know, that happens. Um... There is an alternate ending to this film, which, you know, uh, well, I guess since it's an alternate ending, I guess I could perhaps say what it is, but, but Clarence dies, and uh, that's how Tarantino wanted it. Uh, Tony Scott was like, no, this is a, I like these characters, I want both of them to live. And so he basically made the ending the way he wanted it. So, um, where they both live, and they have a child uh, named Elvis, and uh, basically, um, and Tarantino's, uh, he dies, and Alabama just uh, leaves it with all the money, and, you know, it's pregnant, and then she, uh, even though she's not showing it, but uh, eventually she, you know, she's like, oh, in the in the, the uh, normal ending, you know that she says how like you know if he had died, their child would not be named Elvis, implying that she would have named her child after him. Um, but uh, yeah. So yeah, this uh, Tarantino big set here. Uh, celebrating the first twenty years of uh, Quentin Tarantino. 
had true romance. Does not have uh, natural born killers, because, well, but all I will say is uh, Tarantino isn't the biggest fan of that film. So, which is uh, the big reason why it's not on the. And this set. So here, uh, under Reservoir Dogs is True Romance. So this is uh, the first time I ever owned True Romance. And so, yeah. Pretty sure also it's the... Yeah, True Romance is the... Yeah, that was the director's cut. So... So yeah, a lot of stuff. The film itself is uh, very well done. I I enjoy it. Um, in terms of Tarantino like written films, I don't know where I would exactly put it for my apps like my top films. Um, he only has one film left that he will direct. And then that will be it for him. He will be done. And, uh, yeah, so, uh, I will say, uh, this does feel uh, quite a bit like a Quentin Tarantino film, though, of course, the stylistic, uh, like the directing style is not Tarantino's, but the dialogue and everything that kind of encompasses the script and everything it definitely feels something like you, know, you would typically see in a quentin tarantino film but um yeah the direction is uh definitely tony scott's and of course that's not a bad thing uh, yeah anyway that's a true romance and my general thoughts on it um what do you think of this film? Do you enjoy it? Do you dislike it? Um, in terms of the films of Quentin Tarantino regarding written and directed or like just written by, included with that, uh, like where would you put this film? Would it be high on the list or low or somewhere in the middle? Uh, I think offhand this would probably be somewhere in the middle. I yeah, I, I, I haven't uh, really thought lately what I would, uh, where I would put this, but it's a pretty good film, I think, overall. Uh, not his best written film, but not his worst either. Uh, very well made. Everybody in this uh, film did a great job in front of the camera and behind the camera. So, uh. Yeah, that's all I have to <clears throat> say, really. Um, I hope all of you are doing well. Hope you're all having a great day. Hope you're all having a, uh, a great weekend. Hope your great uh, week was great, and I hope uh, you'll have a uh, great next week. Hope your uh, Thanksgiving was good, if you celebrated that here. Um, and, yeah... Uh, it's December now, so yeah, the, the year is almost over. So, uh, yeah, hope uh, you're all doing well, and uh, just take care. Bye.